So, I have been promising a music video of some sort, and here it is, the review of this Kentucky KM250S mandolin. Let's roll that intro and let's talk about it. So, growing up in the South, bluegrass and country were both kinds of music we had in my hometown. That's just how it was. And so, me being a guitar player and wanting to expand and learn new instruments, mandolin was one of the next ones I picked up. Mostly because my stepdad had one laying around. Granted, the one that he had was a vintage mandolin made by Gibson. And the thing was absolutely incredible, even though the body had started caving in a little bit because that thing was decades old. It was an amazing instrument and it sounded so good. And I can't afford to replace one of them. It's kind of expensive. So when I was trying to decide what kind of mandolin I wanted, I have been looking at Kentuckys for approximately 13 years. And yes, I said 13 years. And I have been wanting one, finally got my hands on one. And this thing is amazing. So let's real quick look up close. I'll show you some different angles and stuff and we'll take a look at it. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. So three, two, one. Okay, so, Kentucky, mandolin. Good for country, bluegrass, right? Eh, you can actually do a lot of different genres and a lot of different things on the mandolin. I have tried classical, I've tried jazz, I've tried worship music at church, and you can do a lot of things. It's a very versatile instrument, and I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you probably know that, and you just wanna know, is this one, this particular model any good? And I have to say, yes, it is incredible. I'm gonna talk about the things I like and I'm gonna talk about the things that could probably use a little improvement. I'm not gonna be biased. This is not like a paid review or anything. Just talking about my honest opinions on this thing. Number one is the projection and the sound. This thing is loud for an A series, which means it's the teardrop. The F is the one where it has the funny shape and if you saw me touch down, it's because my phone was trying to talk to me and I don't want that to happen. But this one has lots of projection. Being the A, it allows for a slightly different tone, a little more mellow and a little darker than the full F. And so, real quick, I'm gonna play just a couple chords so you can kind of hear what it sounds like right now. Now I'm gonna play a basic scale so you can hear what it sounds like one note at a time. Okay, so it has a nice, good sound and it, it's really nice and projecting and... Even the stops, the muted, muted strings has a nice punch to it. It's gorgeous. I mean, you see the back on that thing. That is, that's one pretty instrument. I'm just saying. So the next thing I really love about this is the action. Now granted, this one was picked up secondhand, so I don't know if it was set up or not, but the way this one is playing right now, could not ask for a better action. I'm gonna try to hold it up. You might can see it there. I'm not entirely sure. But it is crazy low. Perfect, just the way I like it. There's no buzz. But it's low enough to be able to just rip some of those real fast runs. Nice, quick little licks. The action on this thing is fantastic. And the third thing I love is I just love the look of it. I mean, I talked about that just a second ago, but this thing is absolutely beautiful. Kentucky just know how to make a great mandolin. Now, I said I would tell you some things that I wish could be better, and that's what we're gonna talk about now. 
And number one is I do wish that it was electric. And I know a lot of you are probably cringing right now because you are traditionalists who mandolins should not be, you should just mic it. But for convenience sake, I do kind of wish it was an acoustic electric, but you know, that's just the nature of the beast. Now the next thing is, maybe it's because I'm a guitar player by nature, but these tuners, I've not had any issues with tuning. Let me say that up front. There have been no issues. I just think these tuners are a little wonky at times and they'll ping as you're tuning up. I'm gonna look into seeing if maybe Grover or someone makes some mandolin tuners. Not 100% sure, but that, that's another thing that I would probably tweak a little bit. And lastly is, this is just the thing I have with mandolins in general. If you have to change the strings and you make the mistake of taking them off and your bridge falls and the sound post inside of it falls, kind of just in trouble. So, I guess that's more of just a PSA, is be careful when you're changing strings on a mandolin. But I'm sure you know that, like I said, because you just want to know if this one's any good. So I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to play various chords, um, ones I know at least, some bar chords, and then I'll try to play some kind of little melody so you can kind of get a better idea of how this thing actually sounds. And just for prosperity's sake, so you know what gear I'm using to record this, I'm using a Canon 6D Mark II. If you've watched my other videos, you know that. And on top, I have a Rode Video Micro. So it's not the best microphone, but I still think it'll do it justice. So, some chords. <laughs> bar chords, and some melody stuff. Not gonna play too much of that because, you know, you get in trouble for that occasionally, so. <laughs> but, overall, I could not be happier with this thing. If you are looking for a mandolin to pick up, say, your first or even your fifth or even your 10th mandolin. I definitely recommend having one of these. It is such a joy to play. I have a beautiful hard case as you saw earlier to go with it. This is my baby. I've not been able to put it down since I got it. I hope this helps you if you were on the fence about buying this. And don't forget guys to live that creative life. I'll see you next time, bye!